My scam bait email boxes continue to overflow with messages promising me untold riches. Whilst it's fun to draw the scammers out into long, rambling, time-wasting conversation, the majority of my interactions with the scammers are rather brief. Here are some of those. Let's go scam baiting. Here's one from George Rallis regarding my inheritance fund of $9.5 million, to claim which I only have to send $25 in gift cards. That's right, if the scammer is to be believed, they're not. The Bank of America wants some iTunes cards. Well, iTunes cards and my personal information. You know, the kind of information you should never share with a stranger on the internet. Anyway, the email asks, Did you authorise anyone to pick up your inheritance fund from our branch? Andrew Jack came into our office yesterday in respect of your brackets 9.5 million US dollars, which has been credited with us by the United Nations to be transferred to your account. We decided to write and hear from you to be sure that you are aware of the inheritance fund of 9.5 US million dollars. In our branch, above listed details is needed if you are not aware of it and you wish to use this opportunity to receive your fund, only pay delivery charge $25. So the story about some unknown person coming to the bank to claim my inheritance fund is, I suppose, intended to galvanise me into action. I'm supposed to act immediately for fear of losing out on this amazing, albeit non-existent, fortune. The email ends, your respond is high needed to enable us to proceed with the transaction immediately. So I replied, I don't know anyone called Andrew Jack. I know someone called Daniels Jack. Gentleman Jack, they call him. I also know an Andrew Julie's, but I don't think it can be her. Does that help at all? If not, why? There was no reply. Maybe Andrew Jack just walked away a rich man. Next, hello entrepreneur. Do you have a viable project that is in need of funds injection? We are consultants to an investment firm who might be able to help. Awaiting your prompt response. I said, I don't have a project at the moment. Ideas are hard. Do you have a suggestion? No reply. Next, a whole series of scammers that I replied to with the same response. My name is Philip Frederick, a philanthropist and founder of PNF Industries, one of the largest private foundations in the world. I believe strongly in giving while living. I had one idea that never changed in my mind, that you should use your wealth to help people, and I've decided to secretly give $10.5 million to randomly selected individuals worldwide. I want to use my wealth to help and support selected individuals who will help people around them. Yes, randomness does sound like a good way to achieve that. On receipt of this email, you should count yourself as the lucky individual. I said, OK, I have some questions. My name is Osman Suleiman, an external auditor for the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, Central Bank, in North Cyprus. So working as part of a bigger team that covers the entire region, several details around 1,000 bank accounts that have not been touched for 10 years or more have been made official to the general public under legal requirements, which means the details of the bank accounts remaining dormant for at least 10 years must be made public for collection. It goes on. The amount is question mark 11.7 million euros and banking regulation legislation in TRNC demands that I notify the local authorities after three years, which is long overdue. The above analysis underscores my reason is to seek your permission to have you stand in the gap as the next of kin and beneficiary to this funds. This fund will be approved and released in your favour as the next of kin if only you are willing to adhere to my instructions and maintain a perfect cooperation. I replied, OK, I have some questions. Attention, beneficiary. Fund transfer of 5,000 US dollars. Information reaching us from our corporate headquarters now states that you have 48 hours to effect payment for the activation of your MTCN to enable you to cash up your first $5,000 from your total brackets fund. Since you are finding it difficult to make this payment, we've decided that you are to go ahead and pay whatever you have for the activation fee, since you're not able to come up with the required sum. Time is of the essence here. Do contact us with this email. You are to pay whatever you have for the activation fee, and we will activate your MTCN upon receipt of this payment. Now, tempted to pay just one cent, but... Okay, I have some questions. Greetings to you, my good friend. You have been given a $5 million US dollars donation fund. Contact us at this email for your claim. I said, okay, I have some questions. Payment, 36.5 million US dollars United States dollars for you. Okay, I have some questions. Dear elect, my name is Warren Edward Buffett. Having pledged to give away 99% of my fortune to philanthropic causes via the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Okay, I have some questions. And then another message from Osman Suleiman for the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. Okay, I have some questions. Finally, this scammer responded. Okay, you can ask your question. But by this point, I can't remember what it was now. Can you help? But there was no response. Next, a bit of a blast from the past. 
Back in November 2020, this scammer contacted me via a message spammed out through a security flaw in Google Forms, a briefly popular method for scammers at that time. Good day, how are you today? I'm writing to inform you that I went to the bank to confirm if the cheque has expired or getting near to expire, and Mr David Bryan, the Director of Federal Reserve Bank PLC, told me that before the cheque will get to your hand that it will expire. And again, we've got the standard scam. There's a fund waiting for you. We need your personal information, the kind of information you should never share with a stranger on the internet, and the funds are in a diplomatic courier service box or something. At that time, I had replied, Many thanks for contacting me. I assume this is related to the John Warosa legacy fund that I was trying to claim. Please confirm. And at that time, I think there was only one response from the scammer before it all went quiet. I received your email and the note is understood. Therefore, my special agent, Mrs Elizabeth Lisson, will start your delivery immediately, but you have to send us your clearance charges, which are $400 only. You can convert it into your country currency and send it through Western Union or MoneyGram. Please, I need your urgent response so I can give you the information to make the payment to avoid much delay. Thank you and remain blessed. Regard, Mr Frank Godwin. You can tell this was a couple of years ago, as the scammer was asking for payment via MoneyGram or Western Union. That method is rarely requested now since the Central Bank of Nigeria basically shut down incoming transfers via MoneyGram and Western Union. And that's part of the reason scammers ask for gift cards these days. Anyway, that all happened. Then just this month, nearly three years later, the scammer was back. Good day, my friend. I'm here for good news. Congratulations. Wish to inform you that your fee has been paid. So right now, as I'm talking to you, all you have to do is get back to me with your full information, such as your name and your home address to avoid wrong delivery. I'm waiting for your response because I don't want them to cancel this because of late responding. Finally, I exclaimed. Okay. Scammer Frank replied, you're welcome. All you have to do is make your choice and choose how and where we can transfer your funds to you. And please also follow up with these instructions so that we can be able to proceed immediately without any delay. One, through bank-to-bank transfer. It will only cost you the sum of $320. And if you can send the fee immediately, you will receive your funds within three bank working days. Two, through the online banking system. It will only cost you the sum of $300. And if you pay the fee now, we will forward you to the bank website and log in so that you can open the online banking and start making use of it. Three, through an ATM card delivery. It will only cost you the sum of $280. And if you pay the fee today or tomorrow morning, we will register your ATM card and you will receive it within three days. So, you have to make your choose and get back to me. I complained, but you said the fee has been paid. The scammer said, all you need to do is make your choice how to receive the funds. I pressed on, okay, but the fee has already been paid, right? You received the fees that I sent to your colleagues already, is what I'm asking. Frank confirmed, I want to let you know that we already concluded everything. All you need is to get back to me and choose where and how you can receive your funds. Make your choice and get back to me. Hmm... Are there any more options, or just those three? Yes, for government instructions, replied the scammer vaguely. OK, I said. Please tell me about option four. Do you want to receive it cash in consignment box, the scammer asked. I inquired back, is it possible to disguise the cash as something less conspicuous, so as not to raise eyebrow? No, sorry, said the scammer. OK, I said. So how do you want to receive this fund, asked scammer Frank. I replied, Is there an option five? Why can't you choose from the options I give you, complained the scammer. Give me your direct phone number so I can contact you. I explained, I can't give you a phone number as it dissolved. I'm just not completely satisfied with the four options you've so far offered. What's the next one? How do you want to receive the funds, queried the scammer. Well, let's remember that we're dealing with the Federal Reserve Bank here, and I know how international banking works in 2023, so can I get it in Google Play cards or Apple iTunes or Steam Wallet cards? The scammer replied, you can only send the fee in any method of this because we have different mode of receiving payments. I confirmed, yes, that's how I want to receive it. Option six, the steamed Apple card. OK, said scammer Frank. I replied, OK, go to the store right now, immediately, OK, simple, and buy the card right now, OK, simple. Immediately scratch the back, simple, and send the photo immediately right now, OK? But something was apparently wrong, and Frank, the scammer, didn't reply anymore. Oh well, I suppose I'll have to wait another three years for him to get back to me. Next, international coordinator. New bank details received. On 23rd June 2023, we sent an email to you to confirm a change in bank details. This letter has been posted to verify this change and reassure you that this is a legitimate transaction. Good, good. I think it's necessary for banks to assure me, without me ever even asking, that this is a legitimate transaction. Anyway, they gave me some bank details which are all made up and therefore designed for a potential victim to disagree with. And please indicate if the above details are correct to avoid wrong transfer. If there's more information, kindly reach out directly to our remittance operational manager, Mr. Mark Raphael. I replied, Oh, hi, Mark. Direct services replied, 
Bank will handle and deduct all banking-related charges before wire transfer. Take note of this. Your related documents that would ascertain and legitimise this process will be completely handled by you. That would be your commitment. This is non-negotiable. If this is OK by you, we are good to go to let you know how much it costs for procurement of your documents. Contact me directly to this email. Direct email, Mark Raphael. Yours sincerely, Mark. I said, please let me know that it's zero, since, as you say, the bank will deduct it. The scammer replied, you'll only pay for your own documents to use for approval of wire and documents for tax. Every other thing, bank will deduct, but you will only pay for approval documents, which is $3,890. I wrote back, just tell them to deduct that too. Okay? The scammer was quick to point out, not possible to deduct, I'm sorry. But then, only $1,890. What happened to the other 2000 I asked. The scammer said, I had to waive some for you to avoid making it difficult for you. I'm here to help if you wish. It's up to you to decide. If you're ready, then send in your details. Full names, address, occupation, age, bank details. You know, the sort of details you should never share with a stranger on the internet. So that I will start your file case and processing pending when you come up with a fee. Then... Attached is my passport copy. I mean, I didn't ask, but it's a lovely passport. I especially like the way they made it look like the photo is just floating on top. Anyway, I asked, can you avoid even more making it difficult? Like, if you wave some more, or all. Apparently not, though. Scammer Mark replied with this beautiful piece of prose that I think we need to take the time to properly enjoy. For this transaction, my hands are tight. And if this transaction is concerned, I cannot do otherwise. This is the laydown police formulated before me. We're not responsible for your personal stuff, brackets documentation, has absolutely nothing to do with us, but letting you know the proceedings to get this done. Do you really want to settle this? If yes, then follow my instructions and leave the rest on me. Do you part and let me do my part. I give you healthy progress. Let me reassure you again. I'll restore your confidence back. Do what I asked and I'll do what you want. I'm not here to waste your time. This is the story of a shepherd boy who repeatedly tricks nearby villagers into thinking a wolf is attacking his flock. When a wolf actually does appear, the villagers do not believe the boy's cries for help and the flock is destroyed. A world is enough for the wise. This is all I can say. Well, yeah. We'll see what happens next in just a moment, after this short break to answer one of your frequently asked questions. Today's question is, why don't you send the scammers some malware? I have several reasons why I don't want to do that, but first let's think about what would be the purpose. I suppose it ranges from the possibility of interfering with the scammer's operation, which seems like not a completely terrible idea, all the way to simple vindictive revenge, which I don't like so much. Some of these suggestions are probably hyperbole and such, but some likely isn't. It's hard to be sure. My reasons for not doing this, in no particular order, it might harm people who are not the scammer. If the scammer's using a computer in some internet cafe or a friend's house, then destroying that computer would potentially harm an innocent party. You might argue that the internet cafe or the friend shouldn't have let the scammer use their computer, but I would counter-argue that they might not even know if they're taking privacy seriously. And I think it would be bad to punish someone for acting on the principle of respecting another person's privacy. Nextly, it might harm me directly. I mean, suppose instead of an electronic virus, I sent them anthrax in an envelope, which, by the way, some people have also suggested. If I was not sufficiently careful, I could get infected by the anthrax myself. Likewise, with handling a piece of malware in order to send it to a scammer, there are risks to be managed and avoid damage to my own setup. I just don't care to court the risks of handling malware, or anthrax, when I don't really need to. Furthermore, it might harm me indirectly. My mailboxes might get flagged as problematic and shut down if I'm sending malware. I could use separate mailboxes, I suppose. I do practice reasonable measures to anonymize my scam baiting activities from the scammers themselves. But my anonymity measures would not prevent someone with more resources, such as an ISP or law enforcement organization, from tracing me if I was perceived to be the problem. And finally, from a sort of moral or ethical perspective, there's that thing about if you're going to fight monsters, take care not to become a monster yourself. You might disagree about all of this, and that's fine. I have to draw my own line where my conscience suggests to me I should draw it. Anyway, let's get back to the scam baiting. I pointed out that your hands were not too tight to wave before. I'm just asking you to wave again. I didn't understand the other half of what you said about the wolf world. But the scammer insisted. Sorry, I can't wave anymore. I've done my very best, and I've stretched my limit. I'm very sorry. This is what is obtainable, and no going back. I said... I know it must be hard to stretch and wave when your hands are tight. I can't even imagine the discomfort. But please try. Pressing on, the scammer wrote, First of all, I need your details. Names, add, ph, occupation, age, bank details to set up your file. You know, the sort of information you should probably just fabricate if you send it to a scammer. So you're going to wave, I inquired. This annoyed the scammer a bit, who responded, I can't wave and I'll stop further communication with you after today. And if you fail to comply, I've told you and you kept on and on. 
This is not a child's play, and stop wasting my time. If you return without this dump question, I'll black you off. I suggested, I think between the wave and the deduct, it should be possible to zero. And who said anything about a child playing? Are you a small boy? That usually does it, and in this case it did. You are blocked. All your mugs will be moving to trash or spam. Good luck. Now, I always like to probe a little bit after the scammer says they've blocked me because some of them either just don't or perhaps can't. I did also realise at this time that we'd been conversing via the scammer's direct services mailbox, not the Mark Raphael address he'd earlier requested. So I thought maybe he might not have blocked me on that one and tried, Oh, hi, Mark. And I got a reply. Hello, Mange 2. Have you agreed to take care of your documents and the cost? So I replied to wonder, Oh, I thought you said you were blocking my mugs. And asked, Are the mugs unblockened? If so, please can you confirm by waving. But there was nothing. So that's all we have for today. I hope there's been a little fun. Thanks for watching. Stay safe from scams. And I hope to see you again soon. So